The sloshing machine turned out to be bonkers in Salmon Run as well, but not for the same reason as why it's enjoying popularity in Turf Wars and Anarchy Battles right now. Hey there everyone, it's Haz here and I promised an update for this week's Salmon Report episode and I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong, this weapon is nuts now. The sloshing machine was considered one of the worst weapons you could get in Salmon Run for Splatoon 2, mostly because it has relatively low direct and indirect damage, it needed time to clear hordes and was also very technical for most players and freelance to really bring out its strengths. In Splatoon 3 though, it has been buffed considerably just for Salmon Run, as they have increased the direct damage of your hits from 150 to 170, and most importantly, your indirect damage has been buffed from 80 to 100, and this is huge. Before, you could not one-hit Splat Chums and Salmon Run, and it was really easy to get cornered with the machine. But overall, its horde clearing wasn't amazing, but the simple buff now makes the sloshing machine one of the best horde clearers, but it's not for free. So let's take a look at a quick tech everyone should learn about this weapon. As you know, the sloshing machine has a special attack as it deals direct hit damage, but it also carries an area attack with itself and damages everything in its path, which we call its indirect damage. I'll demonstrate this in the training room. As you can see, if I'm hitting this chum balloon, I'm doing 170 damage to it, but I'm not even touching anything else around it, so shooting this way against lesser salmon is just most of the time a waste of your time and damage. Instead, it's crucial to learn to aim above horde so that instead of direct hits, you will be hitting them with the tail of your sloshing attack, dealing 100 damage to each target. It's pretty simple, isn't it? But so effective. In action, it might take a bit of practice to learn the height, but you will instantly feel the difference. Before, you would do only 80 damage, and thus it would require two shots to clear chumps. The simple buff made this technique infinitely more important to learn. This very same strategy is also quite useful to enemies like a scrapper. As you know, you cannot splat a scrapper from the front, and usually you have to stun it and get behind to do that. As a sloshing machine, though, you can make use of your indirect damage of your shots, to arc your fire slightly above and thus behind the scrapper. And as your shots will land behind them, the tail of your attack will still scrape the scrapper, resulting in 100 damage and also allowing you to easily splat them without having to get behind and leave your safe position. The very same strategy can also be used in fact to take care of two pots from a stinger if you happen to try hunting them down, as you can damage a pot with your direct hit but also with an indirect hit if you arc your shots properly so both of them hit. Another trick that got slightly stronger thanks to the direct damage buff for the weapon is dealing with Drizzlers alone. As a sloshing machine, you can actually play with the arc of your shot to delay when you are dealing damage. This was really important against Drizzlers in Splatoon 2 as you were not able to split them during the revealed time. The trick is to aim to the sky just before the Drizzler would turn over to pre-fire against them a shot that will only land once the Drizzler is vulnerable allowing you to fire an additional time and safely splat them. Now this method got easier thanks to the direct damage buff, but it's still a very neat trick to learn if you want to take out those drizzlers fast and get better with the sloshing machine. As you see, the sloshing machine has several advanced tricks and techniques to use that everyone should know about as it makes the weapon from somewhat of a mid-tier okay slosher into a now a top-tier weapon for Salmon Run thanks to its buffs. This rotation overall ended up being by far the best this week and there is still some time to push your ranks if you'd like, but this combination has been very, very successful even in freelance and I had an easy time to climb towards 400. Probably should have tried to go higher, but it's really a big time sink sadly to reach those higher hundreds of executive VP. On the bright side though, Kohozuna has been falling apart each time we encounter them, so this is also a fantastic opportunity to farm more skills if you need them, as these weapons, but especially the dapple dualies, ended up being monstrous against the King Salmonid. Either way, this is a wrap for this little update for this week everyone, hope you enjoyed it and helped you get better with Sloshing Machine. I definitely wanted an update on it, as this weapon is now pretty good, if not amazing. Next week is also looking good, but we'll talk about it in the next episode of Salmon Report. Until then, take care everyone. Bye-bye.